The following program is paid for by Christ Tower Ministries International. Today on Dominion Lifestyle TV. Hello, hello, beloved friends. This is Toya Ademola, the presiding pastor of Domino International Center. I believe you're going to be blessed tremendously with the broadcast of today. Open your heart, receive the word, apply it every word that you're going to be hearing today. Use it. Your life will never be the same again. See you at the end of the broadcast. Be blessed. Supernatural endowment is the inborn ability and capacity we have in Christ Jesus for you to be connected to this dominion we are talking about it can only be found in Jesus it is not the nature of your job it is not the position of your job that makes you worthy it is your place in God welcome to Dominion International Center a church with a difference where we raise pace setters and role models. And now, get ready to be transformed by this winning word. You are born to reign. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. You are born as a priest towards God never to allow your connection with God to be disconnected and you are born as kings to reign on the earth. We are co-ruled with our master, with our Lord, with our father, with our savior. We are born as intelligent people we are born as co-creator with God. I want you to know the Bible says there is a fighter force. The spirit of intelligence in man and the breath of the almighty gives him understanding. Man lost his position of authority, his position of dominion, when sin enters into the world. When the Lord told the first man not to hit the fruit in the garden of Eden, he was saying to him simply, the day you disobey me, you are signing a deal or you are breaking the covenant we had together and you are coming under the covenant of Satan directly. Because the first man God created was in charge of the garden of Eden, garden of comfort, garden of dominion and God gave him the opportunity to reign. That's the reason why anything he does in that garden stands. But the day the first man, Adam, hates the forbidden fruits, God warned him not to eat. That was the day he literally, consciously gave the dominion of this world even to the devil. That's the reason why the Bible called the devil the gods of this world the prince of the power of darkness. And he controls the natural people. He controls the natural phenomenon. In every nation today, you, you, know, you, are, you, you, you are seeing the activities of the devil, deceiving people, robbing them of what belongs to them. And if you can dance to his tune, he will give you some things just to make sure that you don't think about your future. And at the end of the day, it kills you and you spend the rest of your eternity with him. That will not be any, any of our portion here in Jesus' name. Why am I saying this thing? You need to know the devil is, happens to be in charge of this world 
until Jesus came. How do I know that? If you go back to the temptations the devil presented to Jesus, the first one said, hey, prove yourself to be a child of God. Command this stone to become bread. And Jesus told him, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the almighty God. Satan has no problem with that. He came with the second temptation. He took him to the mountain and he showed him all the glory of the world. The glory of the world. And what can you refer to as the glory of the world today? Has it ever occurred to you when you enter into a city? It happens to me when I first came to America many years ago. They took me to downtown, or the first thing I saw was that we were driving in the night in the city of Dallas, and I saw beautiful lights, all kinds of color, red, green, blue, mentioning the city was so beautiful, 24 hours light. Everyone, they were driving wonderful cars. Nobody is asking me, can you help me to push your, my car? Everything, the road, wonderful. Some of you have never been in the other part of the world may not understand what I'm talking about. Everything was working. Then they took me to downtown Dallas. We had a conference there, and I saw high-rise buildings. People coming from their offices. We visited a Jewish man in downtown Dallas. If you see his office, very spacious. All manners of technology as of that particular time was there. I love what I saw. And you see people, the first question you are going to ask yourself is that they told us America is a, you know, you, know, you can have what you want in America. It's a land of opportunity. But you are asking yourself, when am I going to break through? When am I going to have my own portion of this particular <laughs> national cake? You are asking yourself. And the Lord Jesus came to the world. And the devil showed him all the glory in the world. But he now said something to him. He said, boy, all what I want from you, just bow down and worship me. And all this thing you saw, you want money, I give you money. Don't be surprised when you see an unbeliever, you know, making wealth. And there, there are many of them in the world today. Don't be deceived. So he told Jesus, you want fame? Come on, I have it in my hand. You want money? I have it in my hand. You are a man. You want women? I have it in my hand. You want to drink? Oh, come on. I know how to make good, you know, good wine. In fact, if you want to smoke, if you are tired of little, little, tiny cigarette, I will give you the thick one called the cigar. All what I want from you is just to bow down and worship me. But do you understand if you read that scripture very well, Luke chapter 4 from verse 1 you know, to 11, Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1. He says something wonderful which I want us to pay close attention to. He said, if you can bow down to worship me, all this thing will be given unto you because it has been delivered to me. Who delivered the glory of the war to Satan? Who gave him the riches, the blessings of the war? The man was right for the very, very first time in his life. Remember, the Lord Jesus called him the father of lies. He's the originator of lies. So if you hear Satan talking to you, he's lying to you. But for the very, very first time in his life, he spoke the truth. He said, it has been delivered to me. Who deliver it to him? Is it God? No. The day the first woman and her husband called Adam 
hate the forbidden fruit. What they don't realize is that they were signing a contract to say the dominion, the riches, the blessing of this war is under your care. And you can give it to whoever you want if they will serve you. And as soon as they did that, do you know what God did? He sent the man pack, packing out of the garden of comfort. God did that one for you. Because there was another tree there. If they should hit that tree, it means that the man will live forever. Can you imagine someone dying of cancer? Someone dying of leukemia in pain and it will be like that forever. No! God has to chase the man out and he guided that garden of comfort with empty angels and man became a wanderer. But let's come back to the temptation of Jesus. Jesus did not say, no, you are a liar. It has never been delivered to you. He didn't comment Go and read that scripture. The only thing Jesus said was that you must not worship any other God except the Lord your God. Full stop. He did not contest that the glory of this world has been delivered to the man, I mean to him. But God didn't stop there. He now said, if we have to get it back from the devil, there must be a ransom. I told you the power of ransom. I got to know about this thing very, very highly in life. So Jesus became our ransom. Dominion International Center invites you to a special Christmas celebration with Pastor Toye and Wumi Ademola featuring Christmas concert Sunday December 22nd at 6 p.m. Christmas Day service Wednesday December 25th at 10 a.m. There will be worship, music, dance, drama and much more. Countdown with us starting Sunday December 29th a special year and service at 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday December 30th at 6 p.m. Tuesday, December 31st is a crossover service at 9 p.m. Come and celebrate. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The sicknesses and diseases the devil will have inflicted on us to punish us because he's a wicked fellow. Jesus took it away from us. Hear what Jesus said. When he was about to die on the cross of Calvary, the last statement from Jesus happens to be, it is finished. Everybody say, it is finished. The next question you should have asked is that, what has finished? It is finished with the dominion of the devil over your life, over my life. It is finished with the authority of the devil over our life. So the day Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, man's dominion was restored back to him. Man's liberty was restored back to him. Everything that the Lord Almighty God has created for man to enjoy that the enemy has taken away happens to be restored. Therefore, supernatural endowment is the inborn ability and capacity we have in Christ Jesus. Now the question we need to answer this morning is this. What are these supernatural endowments? Hear what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in, Christ, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Or, how did he say, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, stay there, 
Remove the word blessed and, you know, and change it to who has endowed us. Does that make sense? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has endowed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That is to say, for you to be connected to this dominion we are talking about, it can only be found in Jesus. It is not by force, but it is by choice. The devil happens to be the God of this world. His lease is still on, but his lease will soon be over. The original owner will soon take over. Look at the contract you sign. If you have a house, you are the landlord, you are the one who built the house, and I say, I want to rent your house. And we sign a contract. As long as that particular contract is in place, you have no power over that house. I can do whatever I like there as long as I'm not destroying it. And even if I'm destroying it, I can only be accountable when my lease is over. The reason why is as if you think God has not done anything concerning the devil in the world today. The lease is still on. Does that make sense to you? The lease is still on. The lease is about to be expired. Yeah. Are you following what I'm talking about? So don't let the devil continue to run your life. But now, you can escape from the dominion of Satan. You can cross carpet. You can change your position. That you are no longer under the dominion of Satan. Because Jesus has become your ransom. Come and say, Jesus has become my ransom. Therefore, Satan has no power over me again. Because I'm now under the dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if God has blessed us, endowed us with all the blessings in the word of the spirit, we need to know what are these things all about. Come with me to the book of Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. At your own time, read it from verse 1 all the way to the end. But because of our time, let's take it from verse 9. I'll take it from verse 8. Now when he had taken the scroll, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, which is Jesus each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song. God will give you a new song to sing. What are the songs? You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you are slain, and you have redeemed us to God. God, by what? By your blood. That is the price of ransom. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Hear me. Because you are a man or a woman of color, that does not mean you are at any disadvantage. Because you cannot speak like other people you know, does not make you to be at any disadvantage. Somebody say, I have the spirit of intelligence in me. He has redeemed us from every tribe. The one you know and the one you don't know. From every nation. The one you know and the one you don't know. Everyone, he has redeemed us. But he didn't stop there. And he has made us 
What did he make us of? Kings and priests to our God. And we shall war reign on the earth. Now, how do you know a first class king to just a nominal leader? What differentiates the queen of England from just ordinary king from your local town. If you say somebody happens to be a king, if you say somebody must be a king and he has to rule on your behalf, what are the marks of great royalty that you will know that, oh man, this wonderful king happens to be a glorious king. Have you seen princes and princesses before in their domain? You are higher than all of them. Yeah. If you get this royalty mentality, you will never live the rest of your life again as a common man. You are not common. Somebody say, I'm not common. <laughs> Help me to tell your neighbor, say, you are not common. Don't ever in your life commonize me. I am a king. Who are you? That's the song of the choir this morning. There is a king in you. It's only you don't know that endowment as a king is already in you. But the devil has stolen it from you. He doesn't want you to know. And he has taken everything you need to reign as king from you. But God is restoring it back. Now, what are the endowment that comes with that position? If you are a king, let's continue. Let's continue. Then we go to verse 11. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the numbers of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands. Come on. What is that? They are a mathematician, uncountable. They are at your service. And look at what he says. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb who was slain. To do what? Why was he slain? To receive what? Power. If you are a king and you lack power, what will people call you? Useless king. They say, the word of a king is power. So when he created you as a king, the power the devil stole from you was restored. To receive what? Power. And who is he receiving it for? For me. What is number two? Riches. Is that, is that in your Bible? Riches. How do you know the mark of royalty apart from power? They are wealthy people. Somebody say, I am, I am rich. This mentality will shape your life. You are. Can I tell you something? It is not the nature of your job, it is not the position of your job that makes you wealthy. It is your place in God. You may be selling ordinary water, ordinary water, ordinary water, but when you know your reality, where you belong, you will come out victoriously. Somebody say, I have power. The second thing, take, it us, there, take us back. Verse 12. To receive power. Number two, riches. And what is number three? Wisdom. Remember, when Solomon, the great king of Israel, when God told him, what do you want? The father had already has power. He has the riches. But Solomon said, I'm a young boy. I don't know what to do, but give me wisdom. How do you know a wonderful king, somebody with power, but he knows how to use that particular power? Somebody with riches. I believe you have been blessed through the message you have just heard. Like I said at the beginning, 
put the word you have heard into practice and expect a miracle, you will never be disappointed. You are here today, you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, or you have done it in the past, but you are backslidden. The Lord Jesus is waiting for you. Pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know I'm a sinner. I confess my sins before you. Forgive me of all my sins because your word says, if anyone come unto you, you will never cast them out. Forgive me, write my name in the book of life and let the joy of your salvation be my portion. I believe in my heart, you are my Lord and my Savior. And I confess you today with my mouth as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus. I am yours now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed this prayer, congratulations. I welcome you to the body of Christ. I welcome you. Let it be known to you, you are now a child of God. I want you to look for a Bible-believing church where your faith can be nurtured so that your maturity can be established. And if you are living in the city of Houston, fellowship with us in Dominion International Center. We have two services on Sunday morning, 8 a.m. in the morning and 9.30. The Lord will bless you. You will never regret of fellowshipping with us. Be blessed. Let me see you this coming Sunday. And you can watch us online, live streaming through Facebook and many other. The Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. And look at this, your screen. We have churches all ac you know, across the city. The one that is very close to you there. You can fellowship with them there. And you will be blessed tremendously. See you next time. Your host, Toye Ademola. Be blessed. Dominion International Center invites you to a special Christmas celebration with Pastor Toye and Wumi Ademola featuring Christmas concert Sunday, December 22nd at 6 p.m. Christmas Day service Wednesday, December 25th at 10 a.m. There will be worship, music, dance, drama, and much more. Countdown with us starting Sunday, December 29th, a special year and service at 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 6 p.m. Monday, December 30th, at 6 p.m. Tuesday, December 31st is a crossover service at 9 p.m. Come and celebrate. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We believe you were blessed by today's message. We can only continue to spread the Word of God through the continued support of our friends and faithful partners. We encourage you to partner with us today. Log on to our website at www.dominionlifestyle.org or call 1-866-370-6352. Dominion International Center, raising pace setters and role models.